After a brief introduction of calculus of variations, now we are going to discuss the actual problem of this uh, topic. Uh, you know, calculus of variations uh, actually deal with the problems in which the quantity to be minimized or maximized appears as an integral. In other words, you can say that it gives the necessary condition that the quantity appearing as an integral has either a minimum or a maximum that is a stationary value. And for this, let us consider a definite integral defined in this way which I have mentioned in this equation 1 i equal to integral from x1 to x2 f of y y prime and x dx actually in this expression this y prime is dy dx that is the first order derivative of y and y is a function of x and y prime is also a function of x so uh, you can say that in this equation actually this f of y y prime x is called a functional when you say functional i have actually defined the functional in the introduction you can see here that actually this f is a function of y y prime and x and y and y prime is, are itself functions of x so you can say that f is a function of function and you know a function of function is called functional so actually in this equation f is a functional in fact this f is a known function of y y prime and x but uh, this y of x is not known it is unknown that is you can say that the exact path of integration is not known now the what is the actual problem which uh, we will encounter in this calculus of variations in fact uh, the fundamental problem of calculus of variation is that of finding a, a, the function y of x such that the functional i is stationary for a small variations in y of x and uh, what will be the answer of this question i am just going to mention it but uh, after mentioning it i will explain or prove this result actually uh, the necessary condition for this uh, integral i which i have defined above to be extremum or stationary is what this this condition is in fact expressed in by this differential equation of second order this is d dx del f by del y prime minus del f by del y equal to zero in fact, this equation is known as Euler's equation or Euler Lagrange equation. So, you can say that when this Euler Lagrange equation, which I have mentioned here, will be satisfied, then this integral i will be extremum or stationary. And using this condition, you will be able to find the value of the function y of x. So, first of all, I am going to find this uh, Euler Lagrange equation uh, by simply minimizing or uh, maximizing the integral i. And for this, let us see uh, this figure. Actually, in this figure, I have shown uh, two curves, but uh, and these two curves actually joins the fixed points x1, y1, and x2, y2. You know there may be infinite number of curves joining these two given points x1 by 1 and x2 by 2 but uh, for simplicity I have shown uh, the two in fact uh, in this uh, curves the full line curve is y of x that is the actual path and this dotted line curve I have 
defined it by y of x alpha this is a varied path or you can say this is a neighboring path of this actual path y of x there may be so many varied path but for calculation i have considered only one of the varied path and so you can say that uh, the figure shows that the two of the infinite number of paths which can be drawn between the given points x1 y1 and x2 y2 in fact uh, you know the method of ordinary calculus for ordinary functions cannot be used directly to find the extremum of the integral i which involves actually a functional so to reduce this problem to one that can be solved by use of ordinary calculus we should write the equation for the varied path and uh, as a equation for actual path is y equal to only y of x but the equation for the varied path that is y of x alpha can be written in this manner so you can say for the varied path varied path we can write y of x comma alpha equal to y of x comma 0 plus alpha eta of x and let us say uh, this is equation 2 as I have considered this integral equation as 1 so this is equation 2 in fact uh, you can see that this uh, function eta at x equal to x1 and eta at x equal to x2 is actually 0 because all paths must pass through the fixed endpoints you can see this is the fixed endpoints and all paths must uh, pass through these two fixed points so at these two fixed points this function eta of x must be equal to 0 and uh, here this alpha is what actually this alpha is a small scale factor or you can say this is a variational parameter so this is a, a small a scale factor a scale factor or you can say it variational parameter variational parameter variational parameter because you can see if alpha will be 0 then this equation will simply reduce y x uh, y of x alpha equal to y of x 0 so uh, this alpha determines the variation and uh, it determines the varied path so it is called variational parameter or a small scale factor uh, because uh, this neighboring path is slightly different from the actual path y of x and uh, what is this function eta of x actually this is an arbitrary function and it is also differentiable so you can say that eta of x is an arbitrary arbitrary differentiable function of x differentiable function of x this is an arbitrary differentiable function of x now uh, here you can see that y of x or y of x comma 0 
is an unknown path as I have mentioned earlier and that will result in a maximum or a minimum of the integral i. So the function y of x alpha describes the neighboring path. So you can say that y of x0 is actual path that will be maximum or minimum or you can say stationary and uh, this y of x alpha this is actually the varied path or you can say the neighboring path varied path or neighboring path neighboring path now uh, you can see from this equation 2 uh, the change in y for a given value of x will be what? You can say, see that this y x of alpha minus y x of x and 0, that will be simply equal to eta uh, alpha times eta x. And that actually uh, represents the change in y for a given x. You can see this figure. I have considered a point uh, here on this uh, curve y of x and a point here on the curve varied curve and uh, for these two points actually x has a particular value let us say x and for this when we will subtract y of x alpha uh, we will subtract actually y of x0 from y of x alpha then we will get this uh, delta y you can see this figure so you can say that uh, delta y is equal to y of x comma alpha minus y of x comma 0 and from equation 2 you can see what will be this this will be simply eta times uh, alpha so this will be alpha eta of x alpha eta of x and uh, actually this delta y is what actually this delta y describes a neighboring uh, <coughs> this delta y describes actually the variation of y at some given value of x so this delta y uh, is is the variation of y variation of y at some x now in terms of this equation 2 you can see here uh, we can write the integral i now you can see that integral is as the function of y and y prime so uh, from here you can see that now we have introduced the parameter alpha so now the integral i becomes actually the function of alpha so you can say in terms of in terms of equation 2 i now becomes a function of alpha and so we can write i of alpha equal to integral from x1 to x2 f of y of x 
comma alpha comma y prime of x comma alpha and comma x because in accordance with equation 2 y is now function of both x and alpha so let us say this is equation 3 now the condition for extremum value of i alpha in ordinary calculus you know will be what the derivative of this i of alpha must be 0 uh, at alpha equal to 0 so you can say the condition the condition for an extremum of i alpha the condition for an i alpha is that d i d alpha at alpha equal to 0 must be equal to 0. In fact, uh, this will hold for all eta of x, irrespective of the value of eta of x, this condition must hold. And uh, let us say this is equation 4. Now, we will differentiate uh, the we will differentiate this i of alpha a uh, defined in equation 3 with respect to alpha so that we will obtain d i by d alpha at alpha equal to 0 so you can see on differentiation of i of alpha with respect to alpha we get see this equation seriously and then you can find di by d alpha will be what you can easily see so you can see here that this di of alpha d alpha will be what you can see this will be integral from x1 to x2 and del f by del y del y by del alpha del y by del alpha and plus del f by del y prime del y prime by del alpha del y prime by del alpha and plus del f by del x del x by del alpha dx but you know x and alpha are independent variables or in other words you can say this x is not a function of alpha as x is not equal to x of alpha therefore you can say that this del x by del alpha will be equal to 0 so the last term inside this square bracket will vanish and you can say that this d i of alpha d alpha will be what this will be simply integral from x1 to x2 del f by 
del y del y by del alpha and plus del f by del y prime times del y prime by del alpha dx. Now let us say this is equation 5. Now uh, see the equation uh, 2. Uh, here I have mentioned equation 2 and for your convenience I am just repeating this equation 2 again uh, to get the desired result. So you can say from equation 2. What is equation 2? You have seen that this is y of x comma alpha is equal to y of x comma 0 plus alpha eta of x. And uh, from this you uh, may write that y prime of x comma alpha equal to y prime of x comma 0 plus alpha alpha eta prime of x eta prime of x you may write on the basis of this equation now we can find what will be del y by del alpha and del y prime by del alpha from these two equations you can see easily therefore del y of x comma alpha by del alpha will be what see the first term in rhs is not a function of alpha so when you will differentiate it partially with respect to alpha this will be simply zero and plus as you are differentiating partially with respect to alpha so this eta x will be treated constant and del alpha by del alpha will be one so this uh, is del alpha by del alpha times eta of x and so this is simply eta of x and in the similar manner we will now obtain what will be del y prime by del alpha which is here so you can see that uh, in similar manner del y prime by del alpha you may say y prime of x comma alpha and this will be you can see here again this first term in rhs of this equation is not a function of alpha so this uh, derivative will be zero and plus uh, here uh, del alpha by del alpha will be again one and so this will be uh, simply eta prime of x and when you say eta prime of x what does it mean it means in fact uh, d eta of x dx so we have obtained uh, the value of del y by del alpha and del y prime by del alpha now let us use these two values which we have uh, obtained here uh, in this equation 5 so after using these two values in equation 5 what will be our result you can easily see here so see this using equations I have not mentioned the equation number here I say this is equation number 6 and this is equation number 7 so now we will use this these equations 6 and 7 in 5 what will be our result after using it you can see easily that di of alpha by d alpha this is equal to integral from x1 to x2 del f by d 
del y and del y by del alpha was here and you can see del y by del alpha we have obtained here which is equal to eta of x so uh, here will be eta of x and plus you can see the second term is in fact del f by del y prime and uh, this value del y prime by del alpha has been obtained here so substituting this you will get this is in fact del f by del y prime times d eta of x dx dx and say this is equation 8 now by the method of integration by parts we will integrate the second term in this equation 8 so you can say integrating integrating the second term by integration by parts integration by parts we get what will be our result you can see when you will integrate this second term see here in fact this will be integral from x1 to x2 and x1 to x2 del f by del y prime this is actually the second term and times d eta of x dx dx what will be this integral when you will integrate it by integration by parts you can see that uh, we will take this del f by del y prime as first function this is your first function and this d eta of x dx we take it as second function second function and then we will apply the uh, rule or the formula for integration by parts you know um, according to the rule of integration by parts we write the first function into integral of second function so what is your first function first function is del f by del y prime and integral of d eta x by dx will be what you can see here that integral of d eta by dx dx this is simply integral of d eta and this will be simply eta so integral of d eta x by dx this is actually equal to eta of x and limits are x1 and x2 then we take minus integral of x1 to x2 now we take the differential of the first function times integral of the second function again you know the integral of this second function will be simply eta of x and differential of the first function first function is what this is del f by del y prime so this will be d dx d dx del f by del y prime dx now you have seen earlier that this function eta of x vanishes at the two end points so and uh, at x equal to x1 and x equal to x2 at both of these two points this function eta of x will be zero and so that the first term in rhs of this equation will be zero or will vanish so you can say that uh, as 
एटा ऑफ एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो एट एक्स इक्वल टू एक्स वन एंड एक्स इक्वल टू एक्स टू दैट इज एट द एंड पॉइंट दिस फंक्शन वेन इज सेच एंड देयर फोर वाट विल बी आवर रिजल्ट यू कैन सी इजीली दिस विल बी नो इंटीग्रल फ्रॉम एक्स वन टू एक्स टू डेल एफ बाय डेल वाई प्राइम डी एटा ऑफ एक्स डी एक्स डी एक्स इक्वल टू सिंपली माइनस इंटीग्रल फ्रॉम एक्स वन टू एक्स टू एटा ऑफ एक्स टाइम्स डी डी एक्स डेल एफ बाय डेल वाई प्राइम डी एक्स एंड से दिस इज इक्वेशन नाइन नाउ वी विल सब्सटीट्यूट दिस वैल्यू ऑफ द इन दिस इंटीग्रल इन टू इक्वेशन नंबर एट यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज योर इक्वेशन एट एंड एट द प्लेस ऑफ द सेकेंड टर्म इन साइड दिस स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट now we will substitute uh, the value which we have obtained uh, in this equation 9 so what will be the value after this substitution you can see so substitute on substituting on substituting equation 9 Into eight. What will be our result? This is d i of alpha by d alpha equal to what? Integral x one to x two. You can see here del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime del y prime eta of x is a common factor so i have written it outside of this square bracket and uh, say this is equation 10 This is equation ten. Now, you know the condition for uh, extremum of i is what? This is d i d alpha at alpha equal to zero. Now, we have seen earlier that uh, for extremum. value of i alpha d i of alpha by d alpha at alpha equal to 0 is equal to 0 so uh, using this condition uh, in equation 10 what will be your result you can see easily therefore we can write that integral x1 to x2 del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime eta of x dx equal to 0 and uh, say this is equation 11 now in the introduction of this calculus of variation i have mentioned a very important lemma and you have seen there that if this eta of x is an arbitrary function then definitely 
this factor must vanish must be zero so you can say according to that very important lemma or in other words since eta of x is an arbitrary function so definitely this factor del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime must be zero so you can say since eta of x is an arbitrary function arbitrary function when you say arbitrary function it means for all values of eta of x this integral is zero it means eta of x is not responsible for this uh, zero result here so definitely the second fa factor or second function which is del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime that must vanish so you can say that eta x is an arbitrary function so we have del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime this should be equal to zero or you may write this equation in this manner this is d dx del f by del y prime minus del f by del y is equal to zero and you can see that as i have mentioned earlier that for the function for the integral i to be extremum this condition should hold and actually this condition is known as euler's equation or it is also called euler lagrange equation so actually this equation represents the necessary condition for the integral i to be extremum so it is an important result which we have to obtain so i mentioned its equation number a so this equation is known as euler's equation euler's equation or euler lagrange equation euler lagrange equation in fact when this condition will hold only then i will be extremum so this is the necessary condition for the integral i to be extremum so you can say this is the necessary condition necessary condition for i equal to integral x1 to x2 f of y comma y prime comma x dx to be extreme and this is the basic problem of calculus of variation now if you will multiply uh, this equation say see here this equation uh, defined this equation uh, say 10 by in fact uh, alpha what will be your result you can see so let us multiply let us multiply equation 10 by alpha see equation 10 here this is your equation 10 
and I am going to multiply this equation by alpha so in fact uh, this will be alpha times d i of alpha by d alpha at alpha equal to 0 in fact this is the variation of i delta and we denote it by delta i and this will be equal to integral x1 to x2 del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime alpha times eta of x dx dx and uh, as uh, you can see that this alpha times eta of x you have seen just uh, earlier see here what is this alpha times this is see here alpha times eta of x this is actually equal to delta y that is a small variation of y for a given value of x so uh, as we know alpha times eta of x is equal to delta y therefore you can write delta i is equal to integral x1 to x2 del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime delta y dx this is also a very important equation now you can see here actually this uh, delta uh, is defined in what manner you can see here this delta is defined actually alpha d d alpha this is a variational operator or you can say this is a small delta variation and this small delta variation will be defined in this manner delta equal to alpha d d alpha so this uh, delta represents uh, the variation of i and similarly this delta y represents the variation of delta uh, variation of y so as you know this delta y is completely arbitrary for a different value of uh, uh, x this delta y will be different you can see this figure i have shown this delta y in this figure uh, here you can see this is delta y and we can take this delta y here this, we can take this delta y here so actually this delta y is completely arbitrary and so if it is completely arbitrary then what will happen actually <coughs> If we now consider that our function i is actually extremum, so you can say if i is extremum, then what will be this variation of i? This will be actually equal to 0. And if it is 0, then you can write from this equation b the rhs will be also zero so therefore from equation b from equation b you can see that integral 
from x1 to x2 del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime delta y dx will be equal to 0. But as I have uh, explained that this delta y is completely arbitrary. So this result will hold for all values of delta y only when this uh, uh, function will vanish. So as you can say as delta y is arbitrary is arbitrary. So we can say that uh, del f by del y minus d dx del f by del y prime this is equal to 0 or you may write it in this manner this is d dx del f by del y prime minus del f by del y this equal to 0 and you can see this is nothing this is simply the Euler's equation or Euler Lagrange equation so this is a, an another a way to find the Euler Lagrange equation you can use the condition uh, either delta i equal to 0 uh, to obtain it or you may use the another condition in differential form that is di alpha by d alpha at alpha equal to 0 uh, to obtain the Euler Lagrange equation. I have actually mentioned both of the techniques to obtain this result. Uh, now see so far we have discussed this Euler Lagrange equation which is actually a condition or you can may say necessary condition for the integral i to the extremum uh, for uh, the case when there is only one independent variable x and one dependent variable y. But uh, this uh, equation may be written or may be generalized when there will be actually several dependent variables. So you can say in this uh, in this derivation uh, that in this derivation you have seen that there is one independent variable one independent variable x and one dependent variable y dependent variable y was in this discussion but uh, as I have told you this result may be extended uh, to the case of function involving several dependent variables so for the case of several independent variables I'm sorry not independent but dependent several dependent variables let us say uh, such a function is f of say y1 of x y2 of x so on y n of x y1 dash of x y1 dash of x comma y2 dash of x comma so on comma y n dash of x comma x so if 
we consider the case when there are several dependent variables you can see here i have considered actually the n dependent variables these are y1 y2 and yn in fact in this case we can use the same result for a particular uh, a, a dependent variable so the resulting set of euler lagrange equation in this case you may write the resulting set of euler lagrange equation is this is in fact d dx del f by del y k minus y k prime y k prime and minus del f by del y k equal to zero in fact here you know this k is equal to one two three so on up to n so actually this equation represents not only one equation but it represents a set of n equations for different values of k we can write the particular equation if you will take k equal to one then this will be d dx del f by del y1 minus del f by y1 prime minus del f by del y1 if you will take k equal to 2 the equation will be d dx del f by del y2 prime minus del f by del y2 equal to 0 and so on in this way you can write the set of euler lagrange equation when there are several dependent variables so you have seen actually these euler lagrange equation as i have mentioned you is the necessary condition for the integral i which is uh, uh, which have been defined earlier uh, to be extremum and actually using this condition we can find the value of y of x which represents the actual path by minimizing or maximizing the integral all these things you have seen in this lecture now we in the forthcoming lecture we will use this very important uh, concept or you may say this very important theorem to solve the numerical problems and i hope you will definitely enjoy those lectures if you have the idea which we have discussed in this lecture in your mind